Hello and welcome back to another episode of Boys Gone Wild. I am back. Andrew still here. I have uh, never left. The plant. I, I went away for five days due to the heat wave. Did um, you actually leave because of the heat wave? No, I, why, I stayed away so long because of the heat wave. Because I'm not is. getting on a train at 40 degrees. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. Um, and so this poor little fella who's seen a lot. And all my other plants have died. But this of is gay a powerful... Sex. <laughs> he's, seen, he's seen the things this plant has seen. It's awful. It's dreadful. <laughs> it's dreadful. It's not only, obviously, there's no, nothing wrong with gay sex, but the no. fact that I'm cheating on BB and lying to everyone about my sexuality mm. and having frequent gay sex. Well, it's a young plant. And taking the idea of homophobia so far that I am acting incredibly immorally, but yes. using it as like, what, you've got a problem with gay sex? No, you're having it all eight the time, times all a week. The time. More than that. <laughs> More than that, eight times a day. That's why he's so depressed. Um, with, uh, t I, th this might be a bit random, but I feel random humor's coming back a bit. Whoops, oopsie. <laughs> What's that emoticon, the one with the... I like that blah. Yeah, when his thick tongue's out. Yeah. But, um, I, uh, just before we came on, there was there was some pants mm. on the... There was some pants. <laughs> on the banister, and they were mine. Sure. And I gave him a little sniff, and you, uh, the panty sniffing. Uh, what, you, what the fuck is going on? My, my pants from the banister. And you sniffed them <laughs> yeah. just before we went on. Just before we went on to check if they were clean or dirty. They were clean. But sure. I, I would never sniff. You can't do the sniff check. You've just got to presume dirty. When I'd think it's fair to say they'd been on the banister for about a week. Wash them again. Do you think? Yeah. I What's mean, wrong with that? Dust. I don't get how... Airborne disease. <laughs> no. You heard of COVID? You think, you think leaving, them, leaving pants on the banister needs another wash? Yeah. No, it's only, it's only when your balls... I think to your balls. No, because my balls... Dust, dusty, maybe hands have touched them as they're going up the stairs. My balls are like a rabid dog. They're right. just, they're making a mess out of it anyway. They are. If you're throwing a chew toy to a rabid dog, you're not like polishing you're right. it. You're Sorry, not like I, saying, isn't it great? Because as forgot. soon as my pants touch my balls, it's over. It's like, it, what? Do explain. Because my balls are just... Right, with sweat and... <laughs> yeah, just... You know, it's over. So I think a bit of dust... It a just, bit of banister juice is fine. It's, it's not given. juice. There's it's wasted. juice. There's no banister the juice. Banisters are juicy. It's thick in the air there. Um, Especially in the heat. But what the, my main point is, it, it's it's. I, I do spe spend a, a funny amount of my life panty sniffing. I do. I sniff panties. Is it They're only, my panties? Is it yours? Or? It's always my panties. Right. But it is. Have funny. you ever got it wrong? Because if you're sniffing it a lot, and we live with three three others or two others, if we're talking about us. Then you know maybe you think these are mine. Or oh, they might checking. be someone else's pants. I'm is sure it? I've definitely sniffed your panties before. There it is. <laughs> I definitely have There sniffed. it is. But you know, I, I'm a big sniff checker, and obviously I'm I'm dyspraxic, so I find spatial organisation quite hard. So often it's 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 not fully clear where the clean and dirty laundry is, um, and it's right. it's not well folded, and it's never ironed, so it, it doesn't. You, the the only real test, the only sense I've got left is, is smell, smell, and that's fading. You have got large nostrils. <laughs> I've as well. got big loss, but I'm just saying it's funny that I spend. How much of your life, percentage-wise, have you spent well, obviously, sniffing pants? It, obviously, if it's my whole life, it would be um, three it would be a minuscule percent. Not, <laughs> I'm not spending three percent. I don't of know. My you life. put underwear on every day. No, it's not three percent of my. Is that's not. I'm not. Even if I do it every day, it's a, it's like it's like. Where do you put twenty seconds? Where do you put your clean washing other than the banister? I put my clean washing in my basket to bring it up then I put it in my drawer but often I, I, I often each step of the way it gets stuck for a while because I forget about it right so, so the, then the, you the, start the, piling your dirty panties on top of your clean panties okay it's happened before it's it has happened, it's happened before because I, I hence the it, sniffing right? hence <laughs> It's a really dark way but then to I, live. But yeah, it is. But you know, and if I've had a particularly messy uh, mix-up of clothes, yeah. it will mean, you know, maybe two minutes of panty sniffing. How? Because I'll be like... Yeah. Uh, and it's tough. The ones where you're like, God, I can't tell. But I feel... No, in that no situation... No, in my balls, I yeah. would be able to tell. So in that situation, you presume clean rather than the dirty. I don't know. No, so I, prefer, I presume dirty. I this think. is a horrible way to live your life. But panties... Panties. <laughs> Panties, you know, if they're not spick and span, it's not like... Then no thank you, man. It's not like a t-shirt in the sense that it's like, if you've got stains on it and stuff like that, yeah, other people are seeing it. Right. Your pants is, a, is just a relationship with yourself. Sure. Do you know what I mean? You, if you were turned inside out, if no, ever the situation never. arises. Genuinely no. No, I've only done it recently. 
How come? Just what changed? <laughs> just given up? Finances. <laughs> <laughs> Financial poverty. <laughs> Look at us. We don't have enough money, so we're just... I'm sniffing panties. He's flipping. <laughs> He's flipping. We're just flipping and sniffing panties <laughs> out here. Just a couple of flipping sniffers. You know, we're getting cancelled. You know, and if they only knew the reality of our lives. The tough, tough reality. But we're, we're flipping, sniffing. No, we're not pervs. You know, at no. least that, that's a rich man's game. That really is. You know, rifling around a, a, a woman's bins to sniff her panties and not looking for food. You know, that's a rich man's a game. woman's bins? Yeah. If I was a panty sniffer, <laughs> I wouldn't be looking in their bins. Where are you looking? In their drawers. So how would you, if you were I'm a I'm looking in their drawers for their drawers. Yeah. Um, Let's bring back or start in the UK the use of drawers for underwear. <laughs> but sniffing drawers is not as good. Sniffing panties. Sniffing is drawers is grim. <laughs> sniffing panties. Sniffing panties. Maybe. If, if it, you're never sniffing pants. Sniffing pa- It has to be panties because panties is sometimes. Panties has a deviance to it for sure. Yeah. Well, it's got a cheekiness to it. Uh, a humble sexiness. If you were a panty sniffer. Sure. How would you go about um, panty sniffing? I reckon it would mainly be befriending women sure. and then Check. when they're in the bathroom Check. you're just either taking them home for yourself or just go I think you've got to get it all in one it's like a kind of a, a, a fix yeah um, rather than taking them home because then you've got some questions to answer so you're like mind sweeping yeah sort of like you're just kind of doing bits yeah so you just try and get how to get your fix you just get there. them in one big handful well, all, pants. all of them yeah. every single one multiple panties Oh, hi, guys. Are you still there? Yeah. Um, talking of mind sweeping. Yes. Um, so, you know Liz Truss? I kind of am aware of her. I don't know that much about the Tory leadership debate. No. And I don't think we have too much to add. I knew that I knew Rishi, Boris Johnson. Yeah, he, I was, know he Rishi, was something. I know Rishi Sunak is 40 centimetres tall. Yes. And during the last... And three centimetres wide. Yeah, and over the last, like... Six months of Boris Johnson's presidency, uh, he was yeah, actually we're, controlling We're calling him. him a president as well. That's how little we know. <laughs> he was controlling Boris like Ratatouille. Right, in the hat. In, no, like, in the hair. Because he he's, so, he he's so small that he can, doesn't need a hat to cover it. And, and, well, yeah, and also Smaller Boris Johnson's rodent. hair is so floppy and messy. Bush-like? You could hide in it. And yeah, he, it he, so he's doing all the things. He's trying to sign through deals, but it's tough. Because it, you know, it's just yeah. it's not because what they, you don't doesn't come across in the film Ratatouille. That's not an easy. They make it look a lot easier than it would be. There's a there's a one, someone by yanking There's a there. couple of minutes montage, but the the also the problem with that is, um, you know, Ratatouille was based around someone trying to be a chef. Ratatouille. Ratatouille. It How, writes itself. It does. It's already done. <laughs> Forget what I was going to say <laughs> because the name has sold me. Rishi Rishi Tui. Rishi Tui. Yeah. But the thing is, all Rishi would have control over is, you know, Boris Johnson's actions. In the in the cooking world, that's good because you just need to chop and chop and cut. Yeah, so you wouldn't be able to control the... You can't control his mouth. And that's why... So it, it would work. just be like him going... That's why Rishi left. Rishi was the first one to leave. He was he was the first rat to get off the boat. He was the first rat off. It was because I can't Tattoo-y. work with this guy. Yes. I've been signing off things, but my mouth has been... I just can't control this big mouth. If only I could troll his big mouth. Yeah. How do you feel now that Boris has gone? Uh, I think we talked about it briefly Did on we? an old Patreon app about assuming that he was going to go. And with all these things, though it was like, um, you know, I do think we, as a country, uh, as Jacob Hawley actually tweeted this, as a country, we tribute days like this well, you know, where it's just like the news becomes like a, a feast. Yeah. Of just yeah. like mad shit's going to happen. We've had a lot of them over the last we five years. We have a tradition of roast dinners. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The what? meat, the meat is like <laughs> <laughs> the meat is like the meat is like Boris Johnson's resignation. What's the taters? The taters <laughs> is you know Rishi Sunak jumping ship, the start of the Tory leadership candidate, and then the vegetables. Collie like, cheese. Well, Collie cheese. <laughs> The, the vegetables. This is like the Andrew Marsh. Oh, yeah. The vegetables. So, what did you mean by this? The vegetables. But how Labour um, reacts. Um, um, the going through your notes. And the cauliflower cheese is the public's reaction. The public's reaction yeah. is a minor side option no, the dash of the well, Sunday roast. We, are we talking mainstream media? Or not? Yeah, we're talking mainstream media. Okay, then I'll have to change <laughs> Um, I'm not sure what the cauliflower cheese would be. Yeah, that's fair enough. Ah, the cauliflower cheese would be that he wasn't, he was going to stay in power for a bit and then resign eventually. You know, wasn't going to go straight out. 
Does it work if someone offers you cauliflower and cheese and you say cauliflower, please? Is that excellent? Well, I, well then, all, if, if not, then I've been having the incorrect dinner party <laughs> the Because that's pretty I'm good, like, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just trying to work out. I'm, I'm definitely working. used to that. Have you actually? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, it's polite. It's kind of rude not to. Well, to say cauliflower, Would please. you like some cauliflower cheese? And you say, yes, please. I say, get out of my house. It's cauliflower, please. It's cauliflower, please. <laughs> or cauliflower, none. <laughs> cauliflower, no thanks, not at the moment, I'm too full. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Just start, when someone offers you cauliflower cheese. What? How long has that been off for? But yeah, I, I, I feel very, as we've been talking about, we've been feeling more and more dumb um, around politics and this Tory leadership debate has really made me feel dumb. I think I always reevaluate. Dumb s- or disinterested? Disinterested, sure. But you know, I always feel... Whenever I see a leadership podium is when I really start reevaluating how much I know. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. always like a, I always find it as like a reflective period whenever you see a podium. Yeah. Sort of like when you see a festival lineup and you are right. trying to see if you understand the bands. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, I'm getting older. You don't know who these ones are. But yeah, then, yeah, yeah. When you see a leadership I'm debate. I'm more and more it- disconnected <laughs> if I have no idea what the two people who are going to be are potentially yeah. a prime minister, what they stand for. Exactly. Who's got, got time for it? Who's got time? Like- it's just fucking lame nowadays. Was it always lame? But were you shocked when Boris Johnson went? In the manner? No. Yeah, that's what I mean. It didn't give me the rush I thought it might. No, it didn't just because it was so, it would have been so insane if he stayed. I think we discussed it briefly on the podcast yeah. and it was, if he survived it, it would have been mental. It would have been one of the most insane things that any prime minister has ever done. So it just, it was like, cause the, the clock just stopped ticking. I found it funny. It wasn't like yeah. an explosion. It was just, it got to midnight. I found it almost, I found it disconcerting. Well, the, the the diversity of the race was interesting. It's yeah. like the most diverse race I've ever seen in my entire life. Really? For what, the what about the Tor- Olympics? <laughs> it's not even that diverse. Those races. Well, it depends. Well, which race are you talking about? The which one? Which marathon? Race? You think the marathon is more diverse than the Tory leadership race? Yep. The thing is that it's hard because you can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. It's hard because 100 meters is clearly not diverse. No. It's nine black guys and that one it's white French what, guy. That's why I didn't say 100 meters. Yeah. That's why I've done my research. <laughs> um, the marathon, where you can't, the problem is we've got gender categories. So we're going to have to dis- disregard that. So that's not in there? No. Should we look up how diverse the London Marathon is? No, the London Marathon's not the Olympics. Hey, but then how are we going to find data? What how are mean? we going to find? I can't just ask Siri how diverse the. That's marathon. what you said. I would make hey, a claim. Siri, I would make how? a claim there was no sport in the Olympics, that was, and that accounts men and, men that and women. That was fifty-fifty. No, what that was, was more diverse than the Tory leadership. Well, um, it depends how we're using the term diverse. Well, how are you using it? I'm using what diversity of personality. <laughs> <laughs> Still, probably more of the Tory leadership. No, there will be less, less diverse. Um, yeah, they're all so. the same athletes. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. Just pump and run, man. Yeah. Pump and run. Yeah. Um, no, diverse as in, was there more? Is Go on. Diverse would be there. Is, well, that's an interesting question. Is diversity the uh, kind of a perfect split between all, you know, it's, identities? It's a numbers game of like how many... Because um, if it was all ethnic minorities and there were no white people, then technically it wouldn't be as diverse as if there were sprint. white people. Yeah. yeah. Which is why I didn't say the 100 meter yeah. sprint. Seems we're going in circles. <laughs> Like the, the marathon. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, I think the most diverse thing in sport is the marathon. You see a lot of white guys there as well. They might not be smashing it. They're all guys, though. They're, well, that's what I said. We have a gender category problem. There's also the women's one. All women. Oh, for God's sake! So, well, actually, they. I'm just saying. So you've got start? a black woman. Yeah. You've got uh, two white women. One white guy, um, and two Asian guys. Did Shajiv was he in it at all to begin with? He was the at first... the start. Please don't ask me any questions. No, about I don't know enough. I believe he was. <laughs> we struggle pronouncing the guy's yeah. name. But oh. it's, it's an interesting question. Is it more diverse than it? Is any Olympic sport truly more diverse than the Tory leadership campaign? Percentage of percentage the whole. of the whole. It has to be the most. Yeah, it has to because, be the most. Um, well, the richest pie chart. Yeah, and like the marathon, yeah, because one, it just works because there's, you know, every country can enter it and there's representation from every country. And all there's, men. Pardon? All men, though. All, all women. 
Or or women. Okay. The women's marathon exists, you bigot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not denying. I said I'm we not... have a problem with gender categories. <laughs> I'm not one of those female marathon deniers. I don't know. Those, You're starting to sound like... Conspiracy. The female marathon doesn't exist. <laughs> it's a hoax. It's been made up by the government. <laughs> <laughs> to take you away, your attention no away from the real problems, <laughs> which are child sex rings <laughs> in Parliament. Um, do you, yeah, it, it, yeah. Who are you? Want who do you want to win? Um, I made a friend very upset. Not very upset. That does that sound unlike you? <laughs> Not La- <laughs> that, that I saw her for a midweek. We went to see Jurassic World Dominion. Actually, was it Izzy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um and we this is jurassic world friend <laughs> yeah honestly we've seen everyone um i've got mixed feelings on this one um but this with chris pratt doing chris the... pratt or the <laughs> controlling dinosaurs with two fingers it's great um <laughs> jeff goldblum just a, a, a treasure yeah. actually he really carried it yeah. um but <laughs> Um, no, so before that, we went for a drink, and she asked me, "Oh, who? Like, how are you feeling about the Tory leadership race?" And I went, "I honestly don't give a fuck." And she got really upset by that. That sounds like her. She said, "You should care about what's happening." I went, "No." And what did she? Does she? Who did she like? D- well, it didn't go. I it didn't go, get yeah, her stage because I, no I, I didn't ask. <laughs> no interest. I didn't ask. I, I shut the conversation down. I think. I guess I look at it from partly from a satirical perspective. I don't know if I can't see anyone bit standing out as being much better than any other or like making any sort of serious change. They've you know only got them. Who's going to be the well, funniest? Yeah. They? So you, surely there you should either, be you either pick the one who you think is most likely to lose to Labour or the one who's going to be the funniest to make jokes about. Then neither I think them... Rishi's got the funniest potential because he's a tiny man. He's quite a. He's quite a, a, a clean guy, isn't he? Well, there's that one video of him when he, he jokes about not having any working class friends. Yeah. That's kind of fun. I just don't know enough about the other ones. Okay. This is why I, I, have brought, never, why I brought it up. Go on. Never seen Liz Truss. Never. Um, so I hear from good sources. Liz, trust me with the country. Sorry, continue. That's good. That she should have done that. Yeah. That Liz Truss... Um, Apparently takes it up the chart, Nate. <laughs> Horatio, you can't you can't be peddling you can't be peddling rumors like that on the podcast. Liz Truss <laughs> takes it up the chart, Nate. They're, they're still doing that. I'm like, surely, surely we need a new thing. We need a new What's th- the best new thing? Is <laughs> this Liz Truss? I do like the finger thing when it looks yeah, like yeah. your no the, the the vaginal thing. That's it. Or just can I, I th- like a power pinky. <laughs> A power pick. No, I think a little claw. A crook. <laughs> That's... The country is in tatters. <laughs> and only I can save it. Because <laughs> I remember I remember when this came in. Was it Blair or was it Cameron? I think it was Cameron. I think it was Cameron. So obviously the, it was the focus group obsessions came with the idea that point is too strong, fist, fist is, is too, too strong. Hitler. To, does it, was Hitler fist? Yeah, he's like, oh, oh, oh. nine inch Kleiner. Yeah, it's too... <laughs> Yeah. It's too Nazi and it's too Black Power salute. So there's too many. It's confused. It's like, like, I don't know. Like, what do you stand for? <laughs> <laughs> but that is the perfect. I'm firm, yeah. but I'm reasonable. Which fine to win a couple of elections back to back. Employ that. Uh, maybe because we're so uh, we have such a strong uh, observational nous. We yeah. can tell by right. this bullshit. But I feel most of the country can tell when there someone was... says this. It immediately, in the way that pa- I have a Pavlovian response to a uh, politician doing this at me. I feel like your balls to shrink. <laughs> I like to retreat up in your body. <laughs> <laughs> but it gives me a genuine Pavlovian response. They're lying. That your mouth waters. No, but the Pavlovian response doesn't have to be. I know. Good. Okay. But that, 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 they're lying. Yeah. As soon as someone, yeah, yeah, so I'm yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, I quite yeah. like this guy, and then they come doing that, and it like, you're lying. It immediately becomes not a natural way of talking; it's a performance. You're you because you're, you're thinking about what you're doing. You are lying. You are not being truthful. But it's true. How do, else do you do it? I like. I think. Yeah, I think it's like a little claw. I think bring back this. <laughs> bring back that. What? Hold it up like this. Yeah. Just I'm here to talk to you <laughs> about it. some important issues today. And then you kind of go like that to open up the discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, so look, these are the questions you have. Yeah. And here are my answers. 
What's this? That is, I'm cupping. I did one of these. That's a, that's a genital exam. <laughs> that is, you've just dropped a bowl of soup. <laughs> that is, me, you're doing some sort podium. of werewolf impression. <laughs> Look, <laughs> <laughs> the thing about, <laughs> imagine, I think that you could have the best politician we've ever seen. He has, <laughs> he or she, he or she, has all the answers to all of the questions yeah. that we need and are ready, is ready to take yeah. the country to the next step and solve everyone's problem. If they spoke like this, <laughs> they would never get anywhere near power. Well, yes, yeah, so we, we get the perfect politician. What? And you don't think they can, So they can't do it with this. Mm. Could they do it like this? <laughs> Categorically not. That's worse. <laughs> Could they be kind of. Well, that's actually Hitler. That's what the. Well, the, it's Hitler. Slime and slime and again, slime and it's Hitler and it's the, the camp thing. Yeah. So what do you stand for again? Because there was the there was the light because you you could do the full Hitler salute and then sure. you could do the you could do the full Hitler salute <laughs> and frankly no one's stopping you. <laughs> do well, it right now. In some ways they are. Yeah. Um, yeah. You could do the the sharp Hitler salute and then you could do the, the do, do you notice in the Nazi videos the light ones where well, they're the, just kind of like Hi yeah, Hitler. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's just like oh I'm, oh shit. Oh, it's almost like you forgot about it. The Hitler. Oh, oh yeah, Hitler. Yeah, yeah, that. The Hitler. Yeah. The Hitler. Oh, that's true. How about this? <laughs> he's not making it he's not making it do you remember how mad it was when Corbyn did that debate because this is when I was still kind of like just desperate for him to win yeah um, and I, I couldn't really deal with some of the, the bigger issues that, that faced him mainly and I'm not even I'm not talking about the anti-semitism I'm talking yeah. about the glasses <laughs> do you remember this interview do you remember this This. yeah I do I that do. was mental it's a and then are, are we I know someone who would is Know someone who was in the Corbyn, um, the young people who sounds like you know him really well. <laughs> His social media apparently they're all begging him to stop. He was just in the same way that he's stubborn on nuclear and climate change. He was also stubborn on his glasses. It was mental because he was like, "I'm going to bring back this. I'm going to make this country just, yeah, you just did uh, that it. works for." I don't think he even did that. But he's like, "I'm going to make a country that works for everyone." It's like you can't. He was quite like that. The car. So this was. is very visual for he the was, audio yeah. listeners, but. But yeah, the glasses thing, that's that is mad. You can't be headed out like <laughs> I like if have you seen hot hot wings, hot 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 ones, the YouTube interview. Yeah. I like how he talks. Everyone likes how he talks. He goes like that and he goes up and down. And he sits like there and when he's asking yeah. questions, I want this guy in charge. Yeah, yeah. Something. Staccato. Yeah. Kind of like and I think hold it. When you do yeah, and then that, it exactly back and because what he does is he Tighten goes it up. He goes backwards when he's when he's setting up the question, and then when he's ready to answer the question, <laughs> we're there. <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> obviously, we need to nationalise the railway. No, no, that's the wrong way of doing it because you have to tighten up. Yeah, it's obviously look, we need to nationalise the, the railway, railway, but there's, so it works for everyone. <laughs> there's many important things to consider when we're thinking about inflation. But the most important is <laughs> that guy's winning. Even that guy's <laughs> there because you instantly trust him. Everyone trusts the guy from Hot Ones. Can you do the politicians thing if it's double? No, too too dictatorial. Is that's this... yeah. That's it's either again, again, again. This is this is why there's no, they they haven't changed it because they haven't found one. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Well, it's broken. It's broken. The country's broken. <laughs> yeah. Fix it. Too real. And that's our coverage on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> But Liz Trust, this, this oh, whole sorry, thing. Yeah, yeah. So my sister Liz, works, can we trust works in news, knew someone who used to work in the Liz Trust office. Right. Apparently. You know a lot of people that used to, you know yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of people that know a lot of people that we used to work in an I office. I mean, it is one of my traits. If I think someone's got a juicy bit of gossip, I'll get it out of them. This is why a lot of my friends who work in Westminster annoy me because I'm like, this is not good enough. You, you're spending it all day there. How do yeah. you mean you've got nothing for me? Give me some fruit. Give me something. Give me some fruit. Give me something to work Give with. Give me a snack. This was a real snack. Okay. Uh, Liz Truss, not only does she often barely this never, is an exclusive, never wears shoes in her office. Get her out. So obviously that's light. That's Even just, during the heat wave. I don't know. Once again. So some stinky feet. I'm just saying that she, 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 she always kicks off her shoes and walks around. She eats people's food. I thought you were going to say feet then. <laughs> so weirdly, food was okay. So if someone's got like a sandwich, she just, she'll just got kind a of foot goes, fetish. She'll just like uh, go, mm, 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 oh, and then she'll have like, she'll just, if someone's, someone leaves their, people leave their food out. 
Yeah. That is more. Isn't that mental? This woman can't run the country. Exactly. But this is the loony Tories. As we said before, the Cameron Tories were boring and tedious and they slowly choked the country. This is a bunch of loons. Rishi's a bit like a Cameron Tory, isn't he? He is, but he's tiny. He's a loon. He counts as a, t- a loon. <laughs> Tiddlers do count as loons. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? They were all just, they all looked like people and they were just like. <laughs> but they eat someone else's prawn cocktail crisps. No, no, not that. No. What? How is what, that wrong? What, what, Why would that be wrong? What, what do you mean they eat someone else's prawn cocktail? Liz. I said they look like people in in reference in to real the Cameron life, to- Tories. But, oh, well, I, okay. Because so, that's why Rishi Sunak, who oh, personality-wise like is a, a bit of a person. Cameron Tory, yeah. he is 40 centimetres tall. He is. That's mental. That's only just <laughs> above a normal ruler. Yeah, it's absolutely... <laughs> <laughs> you could measure him fully with two normal rulers. <laughs> Yeah, he, he can literally, he can li- live off a slice of cake for a month, that guy. Just by gnawing at it. <laughs> Just gnawing at the crap. Well, um, I don't think there's any worse trait that you could have for when running for political office that you go around the office eating other people's <laughs> food. It shows but, a lack of compassion. But also the it lack of shoes. It shows an entitlement. It shows a greed. But doesn't the shoe, the taking the shoes off make it worse? You can smell her coming <laughs> and then she eats your sandwich. She's coming. No, go do that. Don't do that. We're better than that. We're not. <laughs> We're not. We're not better. You can always smell her coming. <laughs> um, honestly, I have engaged so little with the Tory <laughs> leadership race that that one hearsay fact has swung it for me. Rishi for prime minister. I reckon Rishi. Rishi. And for the me. other ones. He are does out. seem like with it. And there's Penny Morden. Who apparently is um, first a time I've heard that. She's name. a favourite. Do you know she's like the favourite? There's you only had... two left now. That happened twenty minutes ago. What you point? Oh, you point at your phone. Yeah, <laughs> the plant. <laughs> What's that? <There's> plant. <laughs> only two left in the race. Thanks, Mister Plant. <laughs> oh, we've got new bit marks. Do we? Yeah. Oh. we have just got. Uh, a new load of bookmarks that we've just opened now for the first time. So now finally, we were running out of steam with the ones we've got. But now, do you want to give me half? Oh, I want this one. Okay. All right. Oh, brilliant. So just for starters, Bookmark Boys, you'll know it if you listen to the pod. We love Bookmark Boys. They're our sponsor. You've got to be buying these bookmarks. You want high quality, sustainably sourced bookmark for a struggling single mother with a husband who doesn't exist anymore. I mean, He's left. (laughs) He's fled to Malta. He's fled to Malta. We managed to track him down. And he says he wants nothing to do with the child or the company. Or the company. <laughs> it's a um, really tough situation. So we've got some new bookmarks just to, with the, the swirl of pop culture that's happened. It's brilliant. Liam Payne. If you don't remove those hands, there's a high likelihood you'll never use them again. Brilliant. It's I mean, a, that's, Why that's wouldn't you want that in your book, that's you big excellent, freak? That's excellent. You big fat freak. Samantha Jones from Sex and the City. Fuck me badly once, shame on you. Fuck me badly twice, shame on me. You just no, I'm just, just for it. Sorry, I was just, just yeah. We can't just hear JD Dan. from Scrubs, who apparently is a bit of a doppelganger for me. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Shower shorts for the man who has nothing to hide but still wants to. Uh, that's good. Uh, yeah, that's great. Scrubs is a great show. Uh, Davide, Love Island legend. You're a liar, oh, you got the actress. Da- go the fuck out. Go the fuck out. Um, all right, we want to save them. For well, some let's save ones. some. Yeah, uh, bookmark boys. Bookmark boys. They bring all the noise into the bookmark boys. It's just it's a that, shit. that was that was the worst one we've ever done. <laughs> Put them in your books. They're one for the books. Bookmark boys are one for the books. You put them in there, and they save the place that you're reading. Um, heat wave. Heat, how, how... It's hot. No, <laughs> we can't deny it. We can no longer deny the reality we're in. That it's hot. It's shitting hot. Um. Yeah, I, 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 I've, I've been swinging uh, from... Really? How's that been going for you? <laughs> In this heat, it's tough. It must a lot of sweaty balls. I mean, I, I do Would think... Would you ever swing? In a sex club? Yeah. No, like, I'm talking more about when you hit 50 and you and your wife get a bit bored of each other's genitals and Impossible. you go around... Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> and you go around to, like... It's you're like 50 years old. You've got bored of each other's genitals, just just theoretically, 
and then you find some you find like yeah get in the zone <laughs> and you find some you find like a website with other swingers who live locally you go around mm. you two get in the car you drive you talk about whatever mm. you pull up to the driveway there's a one balloon on the gate to signify mm. where the swing is happening yeah. you knock on the door there's a bit of an awkward encounter with someone who's wearing just speedos <laughs> he then invites you in and there's a small pool outside but yeah. it's not a very nice pool because they haven't cleaned it for a while and there's some dew yeah, on the top of they're it swingers. they're swingers exactly they're too busy fucking to clean um, there's an assortment of snacks including party rings and Pringles party rings and then Christ. you go and have sex with other women and men whilst BB goes and has sex with other women and men you don't have to have sex with other men if you don't want to oh, I'll, I'll have sex with other men please okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> or I'm not going <laughs> do you yes. think you could ever swing yeah I think I could I could would you ever do you think you'd ever do you think you ever very will? unlikely yeah I could yeah do you think you'd ever swing no. No, really? No, I think it's just gross. I think it's All more right. It's more just like, it, I, what, it, I could see it spontaneously happening when you meet, you know, someone. Dinner party gets out of hand. M- exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Dinner party gets out of hand. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, things have got a bit heaty. Let's and you're into that. Does that turn you on? It doesn't, actually. Someone's scrambling across the table at you. <laughs> Grabbing me by the tie. I don't know why I'm wearing a tie in this situation. I haven't worn a tie in three years. Um, but no, it doesn't... Do you not wear a tie for your nice funeral? Yeah, I, was, I knew you were going to say that. And yeah. yes, I did. How long ago was that? <laughs> <laughs> not for the anniversary, was it? Um, they... It was two years, wasn't it? Two years, yeah. Nah, it's fine. Are you going to pull me up on that? <laughs> yeah. You've pulled me up on... Actually, you did wear a tie, didn't you? When your nan died. <laughs> that's, that's when you wore a tie, so you were wrong. Why are you lying to the viewers? Um, I, <laughs> no, I wouldn't wear a tie. What, that wasn't it, the point. I yeah. wouldn't swing. Because it's more like I can't... I wouldn't bear the awkwardness of when you have... I don't want to mix like a function and snacks with boinking. <laughs> it's true. I don't want to do it. Yeah, fair enough. Anyway... Um, the heat wave, uh, they, the, the vibe I got from the British media, it, I mean, it was comedic. Is that lock your sons in a freezer or they'll die. <laughs> it was just, everywhere I looked from all mainstream media was just, Oh my God. It was, they just, there was no calm under pressure. Yeah. There was none of that wartime. Dig a hole underground, put your dogs there and leave it there for a week. Leave it there for a week. I mean, you hear the World War Two kind of like, yeah. and 300 people have died in a collapsed underground. But Britain you, will prevail. If, but Britain, and now it was like, ah, it's ah, hot. Ah, <laughs> it is like, <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is odd. And it goes into the age old debate on question whether the media uh, forms public opinion or reflects it. Yeah. Because it is mental that it has been hot. It's been hot. Look. I mean, record-breaking hot. And do you know what? 40. I didn't, I didn't believe it hit 40. Because you know how often the weather forecast you is wrong? You are a climate change denier. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how often it's wrong? It's not going to rain. Yeah. It rains. I'm like, 40, That's uh, that's you're just Seems sensationalist. A Seems a lot. It hit 40. It hit 40. Fair play. It hit 40. Fair play, boys. Fair play, fellas. Um, <laughs> we're good on the meteorologists once yeah, again. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. They, do, they do the Lord's work. Yeah. Um, but they... It's no, right, so now. the fact that it's it's still biffing hot, yeah. <laughs> don't get us wrong. However, is it necessary for the entirety of the front page of BBC News website <laughs> to be, <laughs> oh, how to sleep in the weather? Should you walk your dog? No! Dogs are dying! <laughs> the amount of advice, it became, the BBC website became like an agony aunt's page. <laughs> but it was, did you hear that, see that amazing, there was this amazing one which says, um... <laughs> Stay safe, says health expert. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the experts are saying it, I guess we better. I guess we better comply. It is. It is fucking. It is hilarious. I mean, the British media. I don't know if other countries like this. I don't know if in Spain they're like. Do you know no. what I mean? In Germany, I'm saying that's in Spain. That's less freaking out. That's a bit more. I don't. A bit more Hitler. Well, they're used to more heat. I guess so. But I, British. Um, media is known for being hysterical and when the snow's out it's like ah, ah, yeah. ah. <laughs> well it's just what for me what I would expect 
And but this is I want to get back to the question of you know what what does what does the media do reflect or, yeah. or or the other one circle back circle or just go back in yeah. because right I fair enough have a have a page on it because it is interesting and I think the thing that you, you, it goes into climate change uh, now uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> you know I mean <laughs> um, it's hot. It's it's titting. <laughs> it's it's titting, chuffing hot. No, um, but fair. Have some coverage of it, but surely you just need one of the boxes. Yeah. There was a live ticker. <laughs> That's enough. Yeah. The live ticker is enough. Yeah. Um, you don't. It. There is like a war going on. Yeah. And it's like. I know it's. I'm, I'm not someone who says people will die. The people will die. Was people the, people did die. That is the Guardian thing. Is people are going to die. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, yeah, they will. What are we meant to do about it? <laughs> it's not like it's not a controversial <laughs> issue. Yeah. The only thing that's it's controversial not, is the climate change yeah, thing. But yeah, it's exactly. that. That's why it's worth reporting on. Yeah. But I, it was just the whole front page. No, so and you know what? When I went on there, I read every one of them. Did you? No. Oh. I read like three. Yeah. I read like three because I was genuinely interested. About what? I don't know. Because <laughs> that's the thing. That's the thing when I, and this is honest self-reflection, I go on there and I just click on the temperature that I'm experiencing. Yeah, I want to know how hot it is. No, but I went on the weather app for that. But I, I was interested in what the, the commentary was. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I, I don't know it's why. It's like an unfolding story, a hot I day. I think it's because it's a unif- It's the first thing we've been unified in. in our, in our. our. Don't look at me like that. In our what? In our discourse at the moment. Okay, fine, yeah. It's always very divisive. Yeah. But we can't run but away. It was, no, it was divisive. We all think it's too hot. Maybe this is how no, we... No, no, it's not true. No, sorry. I would like... Uh, I some people agree with you. hot not deniers. Quite, no, quite a lot of people are saying... Temperature so the, deniers. So there's a Tory MP who's a climate change denier who says, this is a nice, This is you, we enjoy this on holiday. He still wore his suit, full suit. And he's like, yeah, it, it's... It, it, I, I don't mind it being a bit hot. Wouldn't want to be his underwear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't pass the sniff test. <laughs> Try me. <laughs> <laughs> um... But yeah, I guess I just felt like they completely overreacted. There was, a, there was an Evening Standard video, which was um, had music similar to Jaws. It was like, dun, dun, dun. And it was videos of people out. And it says, it was just like little uh, bits of text saying the heat's going to rise to 40 degrees. This is record temperature. And the images was just of parks and beaches and everyone just having a lovely time. Mm. It was just everyone enjoying the sun. Yeah. It was no one looking. And it was just like, dun. It, was just a fo- it just put foreboding music over everyone enjoying the sun. And is that... However, yeah, the country did sort of set on fire, and that's when I was like, "Okay, fair play." I mean, that is pretty hot. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was nuts. That, that, like, I thought they completely overreacted with the screams. Everyone's going to die. The world's on fire. Yeah, I was like, "This is ridiculous." It's just going to be hotter. I don't mind the heat that much, to be honest. When things started just setting on fire, yeah, all over the country, I was like, "Yeah, that's a, that's never that's not that's really not normal. That's, not excellent. that's never happened in my life. Yeah. That is mental. <laughs> Fair play." Is that how people? Ah! And then I was just trying. To- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just- <laughs> <laughs> is, is that how? Is that what they're talking about when people die from it? Do they just burn? I'm not talking about spontaneous combustion. Okay. I'm just thought. How do people die from the heat? Is it just uh, heat old exhaustion? women? On the top floor apartments, overheat. Top floor must be fucked. Top floor. Because um, it's so, the, the difference with, between downstairs alone, in this house and upstairs is li- crazy. Living alone, top floor apartment. Yeah. Um, like heat stroke that heat just stroke turns into turns, shit. Yeah, yeah, so yeah it's like that. pretty terrible. Yeah. It's not, it's it's, not, you know, it's, it's not the cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Steam coming out of the head. It's a lot more of a bleak <laughs> reality. Yeah, it's a bleak, yeah, fading away. It's dog, also, in a, dog in a hot car the, sign of kind of Here's vibes. a fact for you. Terrible vibes, dog in a hot car. Dog in a one hot of my car. least favorite vibes. <laughs> it's a sad one. <laughs> it's not a good vibe. It's a sad one. One. Um, here, here's one for you: the um, the the chicken. the chicken or the egg? <laughs> no, the um, fire service are uh, retiring. Uh, they're all retiring. <laughs> There's no one left to protect us from fire. They're the busiest they've ever been since World War Two. That's a good one. Makes sense. Doesn't shock me at all. Bookmark <laughs> boys. <laughs> no, but how I remedied some of the heat. Was to go to Soho House. Oh really? Um, I'm finished have... on Heatwave. Fair enough. 
Sometimes segways don't work. <laughs> no, keep going to Heatwave. Um, I just had nothing left. Because I was down in Sussex, which was a um, a real relief. I, I actually had a great time, not going to lie. Why was I, it a relief? Was it cooler there? Much cooler. Also, well, how would you know? Can't be two places at once for a show. Met, You've been hoisted office. by your own petard. Met office. Oh, it was at the actual temperature. <laughs> yeah. Fair play. <laughs> yeah. Also, <laughs> I, I went to the beach every day. Don't believe everything you read in the media. <laughs> I think we should start distrusting the weather app. Who's controlling it? What are the invested interests? We know who's controlling it. It's it's the Jews. <laughs> We can start peddling. We don't need to. We don't need to boot around the bush. Nor do we need to provide it, any evidence. It's a little correctness. Well, actually, mad. that is kind of a bad thing because there was an old conspiracy that Jews controlled the weather, wasn't it? Is that a thing? Or Nazis? Who no, can... no, that is. That's what I was re- referencing. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. When you said the Jews, you were referencing the classic conspiracy theory. Or yeah, the, I know, but you... I think I subconsciously did, yeah, okay, and then realised actually maybe you shouldn't say that. Fine. No, we should say that. I take everything back. I don't think. I don't think that's going to be negative. Effect. I hope. I hope the listeners of our pod won't use that. As against <laughs> fodder against us. <laughs> um, but I went down to the beach and f- the water's still freezing cold. Which beach? Uh, tide, uh, the Tide Mills near Seaford. Sorry I asked. <laughs> That's fucking bleak. <laughs> What's it called? T- tide Mills. Tide Mills. Yeah. Is it stone? Uh, well, it, um, it was an old town that... Uh, the beach. Ab- abandoned. And so there's like lots of ruins. Is the beach stone or sand? Have you been to Seaford? Why are you avoiding this question? Go on. Is the beach stone or sand? Stone, stone. Cool. We know it's Sussex. I've been to Seaford. I've played rugby in yeah. Seaford. Seaford's one of the best spots uh, for a town in the country. Terrible for town. For dogging? No. No. It's, it's a gr- have you seen Have you seen Seaford? It's got Hope Gap. It's got this the white cliffs rising up and it's got this beautiful of long Dover. beach. No. Just you white know cliffs. geography. Okay. I think I have, but I haven't been to the they beach They need there. to burn that town to the ground and rebuild it because it's in a great spot. But... Um, but it was lovely being down. I enjoy the heat um, because I was lucky to be have a garden and be yeah. out of it. How was it in London? Hot. Did you travel at all? Mm. Did you get on the tube? I got in an Uber. Okay. Um, no, I... It was... We've got... You know what? The fan hecking did its job. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is it? Sorry, I know this sounds bad, but when it's like people are dying from the heat, <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> did you not have the same feeling where you're like... Just stand next to a fan all day. Maybe just get a fan. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, fair play. Mate, there was, I'm sure there was a fan shortage. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. But it feels like you're not dying of heat stroke if you're this close to a fan. In fairness, I tried to assemble a fan in the heat yesterday and had a fucking breakdown. Really? I was livid because it, if... I, there so was you're getting hotter and hotter. Hotter and hotter. <laughs> it's like, because assembling flat pack furniture yeah. is the most frustrated anyone ever yeah. gets, but yeah. doing it in this heat when yeah. the thing that you're trying to build yeah. is your relief yeah. and it's not fucking working. <laughs> um, but I eventually kind of got there. It's very unsafe. It's like build your own butt, butt, butt plug. It's the similar kind of thing. It's like, <laughs> I just want anal pleasure. <laughs> you're going through the instructions like, ah, just put it in my bum. <laughs> Very Just special. hit my G spot. God, was it, was, it's a lot of smut. I mean, it's hot. It's oh, hot. smut. That's not smut. What? Put it up my ass. Put it in my G spot. Build your own block. Plot. I suppose it's smut. Yeah, that's smut. No, it was. I think I don't. Uh, is it hotter in London because of all the bricks? Partly, and, and the pavements. because of the computers. The computers. Yeah, there's lots. Is of that computers. a joke or serious? It's partly serious. Is it? Yeah, it's, uh, London's. Always two degrees hotter, pretty much. Because all of year the round. computers. Well, partly because of the wind protection, um, part, all the buildings, cars, every yeah, it's more thing. Everything that's hot is here. How does temperature work? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking this the other day because when it was, it was you know there was no sun about. There's one geezer who sort was of hot. eyeballing it. He's just like, there it is. <laughs> that's about no, no. 40? I'd say about 40? You've misunderstood the question. Go on. No, it's not how do we gauge it. <laughs> it's how does it work? Because surely... Right. I said why it was night time. You did. But it was... You You weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> but in some ways you were. It was night time. And I go, there's there's no sun. There's The clouds are covering <laughs> You're it. You're a G. I... And... <laughs> It might you do sound. You guys need the to. The last two minutes, you sound and the stupidest I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've just asked how temperature was, yeah. and then you've just told an anecdote. No, no, it was night time, and then I go. Well, so, 
There's no... <laughs> My fucking retort was that the first one you misunderstood and the second one haven't finished yet. Okay. There's no sun in the cloud. There's... Fuck. <laughs> Right, the clouds are covering it. It's night time, okay? We all know what night time that's is. That's not how night time works. You shut your mouth. <laughs> that's not. Yeah, I know the cloud. Okay, yeah, that's <laughs> fucking true. We've tilted on the Earth's axis and we are no longer <laughs> looking at the sun, okay? I know how night time works. <laughs> I'm starting to question whether I do. Okay. We've tilted, the world has tilted on its yeah. axis yeah. away from the sun. <laughs> there is no sun in the sky. Why, why it hot? <laughs> Why be it hot? Why be it hot? Now, the response I received was because of the retention of the heat in the pavements. Yeah. Is that the truth? And then like the ground. The ground. Not the pavement. It's not so just So if pavement. there's pavement, pavement, but that's not exclusively. Yeah. If ground, ground. Ground, ground, ground. Ground, ground, pavement, pavement, heat, yeah. hot, yeah. sun, retain. Then, ooh, hot. Definitely. All right. Thank you for answering my question. <laughs> yeah, Did that take it, a lot? It. Did that it take that much? Out there. But that but no, seems it's a good mental. It, that no, I don't seems... understand what you mean. Because like no. it was so hot, it was fucking boiling. But I guess that was it, that the yeah, ground. But when you stick something the... in a microwave and you take it out, as I often do, it's gonna be hot when you take it out. Yeah, that's a but then that's I wonder, a good analogy. Has it ever yeah. been hotter at night than day in a twenty-four hour period? That's a Surely great question. Impossible. Surely it's impossible. Is that impossible? Yeah, okay. You've raised some fair points. Um, any weather? Any? Hey any boffins, Siri, go on. Is it? Has it ever been hotter in the night than the day? <laughs> Has there ever been a night that was hotter than the day? Cora. Here we go. Right, it's just loading. Right. Here's an unexpected way to clean your filthy toothbrush. <laughs> Brilliant. What? Okay, here we go. Jo Joshua Wilkerson, former master plumber, 2004 <laughs> to 2018. <laughs> If there's one man we need to hear from on this topic, it's Joshua Wilkinson, a former master plumber. It feels, when you say former, it feels like he's got a belt for it. <laughs> Joshua Wilkinson says, oh yes, when a major cold front moves in after, a, in after midnight, there's rare days in the winter when the high for the day is recorded at midnight and keeps dropping for 24 hours. So it gets colder. Why does it get colder, Joshua? John Chambers. But it's not, hot. that's the opposite. This is odd. Former, Josh Chambers, former software developer. What is Cora just <laughs> former? What is, oh no, that's a different question. <laughs> All right. Yes, I've seen it happen a few times in several places I've lived. It seems to have always been caused by a front passing by. It's to do with fronts. Yeah, it's weather fronts. But what's that? It's um, hot air. Hot air. Hot air. Hot air. Because hot air moves in like, yeah. So it must have happened. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um, but so you, to cool off, you went to Soho House. <laughs> I did yesterday. Have you ever been to Soho House before? My first outing. So you broke your Soho House I, your hymen. I popped the cherry of <laughs> Soho House and it bled everywhere. Um, for those of uh, so those listeners uh, who don't know about Soho House. Who aren't House, pretentious. I don't, yeah, who aren't pretentious. Elitist can't. Yeah. What is how do you describe Soho House? It's a members only place and I believe I've heard I've heard so much about it. Yeah. From you. Yeah. From you yeah. um and others. Um that started off as kind of a place where artists would go. It yeah. was meant to be a place of like a club where yeah. you come and relax, you eat, you swim. And it was meant to be originally for those in the creative industry. To meet. To meet, to network, to relax with a daiquiri. Yeah. But that's kind of morphed a bit now where it's a lot of just, if you own a business, you can go there. Yeah. If you've got but it cash. used to be the kind of place where it was, they would turn you away if you're wearing a suit. Yeah. You'd have to show up in mucky over. Well, I think that the history of, yeah, the history of it is, is that, that London has got a very exclusive culture of private members clubs. It's yeah. not, it's sort of was invented by that form of clubs, you know protecting your fun and making sure only select group of people have because it. Because you can't it's have fun if it's too open. <laughs> yeah, it's an it's a English tradition, which is we're going to have fun over here. You are not allowed in here. Yes. Um, all of those clubs, because the only people who had money um, during the 2000s, whatever, whenever so House started, were bankers and finance guys. It was like, it sucks being a creative and you're going to these exclusive members clubs and there's loser bankers yeah. who think they're cool because yeah. they've got money. And they try and talk to you. Yeah, and it's like, I don't, I'm not interested. I you direct suck. films. Yeah. I don't know what interest rates are. <laughs> I don't are. care. And it, yeah. you know, 
Um, so it was mainly to keep them out. It's now become like one of the biggest, it's the biggest yeah. company of its type in the world. There's 35 Soho houses in the world. Yes. He's trying to make I heard 50 that fact a few by times the end yesterday. of next year. Yeah. He's just done one in Who's Brighton. He? Mr. He's, he's a, I read an Evening Standard Mr. House. on him. Uh, Mr. Yeah, so his first name Soho. Soho, second name House. <laughs> um, you know, there's there's ones in all over. It, it, my sister, when she was in Istanbul, yeah. there was one really? there. Really? So they're, they're all over the place and they all seem like pretty yeah. nice. Look, lovely decor. Yeah. Lovely, um, yeah. Uh, just uh, amen amenables. Amen amenities. amenities. <laughs> Get out. Yeah. Yeah. You're definitely like, wow, it's me trying to make small talk to the guys at the front there. Wow, love, you've lovely, got lovely um, amenables. amenables. You're, you're not welcome here. Um, but my dad's got a membership and my sister hasn't, which has pissed her off greatly. And as soon as my dad's got membership, the the dream is dead you know that's basically that was the oh yeah point. that was the tipping point yeah it's yeah. as soon as you're yeah that's kind of your dad is often the symbol of the of the kind of chaos of late capital yeah yeah, yeah 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 um and old pete's here yeah <laughs> clear <laughs> out everyone <laughs> on to the next one <laughs> <laughs> pete's just got his nose what are we up. talking about lads yeah oh, <laughs> oh they've left no, um, amazing amenities. Yeah. And, you know, it's a gorgeous space. Yeah. Give it that. I naturally, and I don't know whether this is me overthinking it. You also went to Soho House when we went to the TikTok meeting. That was a Soho House. Was it? Yeah. No, that was an office. That was within the Soho House building. Yuck. Yeah. Makes it even worse. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know if I overthink this, but there's... You've been saying some dumb things. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm being real. Everyone's, everyone's getting me. I don't know... If I'm overthinking, yeah, or uh, right, there's two kinds of people who go for the first time. There's yeah. one where someone they'd be described as they fit in here, yeah. you're ready for this, yeah. And there's ones who crumble, yeah. I'm a crumbler, you crumble, I crumbler. I think I there's instant people I'm like, I just look around and I think that everyone there has m more accomplished than I think they are, sure. Now, I could just by being a member of it, I'm like, wow, you must have done some incredible things. Yeah. I'm not worthy of being yeah. here. I'm a Hassocks boy. You're not wrong, but go on. Yeah. But that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. I eased into it a bit. Yeah. I eased into it a bit. But then, Garçon. Garçon. <laughs> more pork. <laughs> out. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> we don't serve pork here. <laughs> they did, actually. But I had the lamb. Yeah. Um, they went no. So what I've realised. So I then we then went in the swimming pool, and it was kind of a party vibe, you know. No. And it was <laughs> I was comparing it to the humble pub, and I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't quietly comparing it to the humble pub. I'll tell I you can that. imagine it was eighty percent of our conversation <laughs> of me having this kind of guilt of being oh, there. Pools and pubs. What's going <laughs> on? No. The problem was that what I found the difference was there was a, it was a rooftop pool. There was like some beds. Everyone was having a good time. I was swimming about in the pool. You got in the pool? I got in the pool. Did you feel... Cause After I... a meal. Okay. Um, all right. A, a pork, pork belly. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pool pork. It was a porky pool. It was a pool pork. Porky pool. I um, pulled pork in my pork belly. My, my view on Soho House, just quickly, um, is... I, I do think everyone feels a bit like that. Some much more than others. I think it's a, an incredibly nice place, but has... Because the staff, who are all like gorgeous and trendy, are seen to have been drilled that you have to make everyone always feel uncomfortable. You have to always make everyone feel like you're better than them. That's exactly the, the comment I've heard on it's, it. It's the brief that I feel they, they've been, and it's like, I've never yeah. been comfortable in one. Yeah. It's always been like, this is a place I could easily be comfortable with in. This is all of these things here yeah. are designed to make you feel comfortable. Yeah. Apart from, you. Just the one little look that made me feel, am I going to be, apart from am I going to be humiliated? Apart from Takesha. It feels like you're going to get humiliated. I did ask for an IPA. feels like you're going to get slimed. I asked for an IPA and it, it, the reaction I got seemed like I asked to fuck her mother. I got a Guinness there yeah. and it was like a long oval glass and yeah. he he was like, he couldn't even work out where, and they, I think he got it out of a bottle. It was the worst Guinness I've ever had. Was so, it? It's terrible. Okay. So they really can't deal with that sort of stuff. I have, yeah, I did feel uncomfortable with some of the waiting yeah. staff, but some were lovely. Sure. But um, what the difference was when I was in that rooftop pool yeah. and it was in this lovely- but I feel, Sorry, the reason, the pool, I've been to the ones with the pool and it's like, as vulnerable as I feel now, getting in a pool. Cause there's like, we were all, I was having, breakfast by this pool 
and this like attractive stylish lady was just sort of swimming almost like she was part of the she, so she, she like an she, attraction it was like it just added to the vibe yeah. and it was all like very, a water it feature. was very classy you know, it was it was bond it, dare sure. i say and you didn't feel, I didn't very, feel like you didn't feel I, very brosnan <laughs> I didn't feel like I could solo when everyone's having breakfast around the pool. I could go in my togs no. and I could just start doing lengths. No. Tightly wound goggles. I just feel like I'd be super... <clears throat> well, it was astonishing you say that because it was about 11pm. It was obviously, it was packed. It was the busiest it had ever been for the whole year at this whole house because everyone went because of the sun. Okay. Um, and I was in there in the pool with my tumbler of whiskey. <laughs> I was fitting in. Okay, fair I was play. doing okay. And this bloke... I see is swims past me. I have to move out of his way. The cunt's doing lengths with goggles on <laughs> at 11 p.m. in a packed pool. <laughs> I've never seen such carnage. Yeah. <laughs> when people just like, Jesus Christ, mate, what's going was on? Was he powering quite fast? He was, he was getting his exercise in. <laughs> but what I felt was when I was in that pool and everyone yeah. was, yeah. it was a Tuesday night. Yeah. Everyone's out having a good time. Yeah. The drinks are flowing. We're at a pool. It's a lovely setting. I couldn't enjoy it as much as I would normally as I would in a pub on a Tuesday night. And I think in a pub, there's a sense of when you're out on a weekday, there's a sense of mutually assured destruction. Everyone's getting up for work the next day and you know you're making bad decisions. Yeah. When I was there, it was like, I feel like some of you are actually working right now. There's like, <laughs> there's like, there's like work rooms. Yeah. They're making deals and shit. Yeah. None of them have to get up the you're next day. You're not working. I had, I had 8am. <laughs> I had an 8am shift. I was like, guys, can we... I don't feel they're like... They're all freelancers. They're all freelancers. Yeah. They're all chill. They don't have to wake up. And they're I was all like... rich parents. So yeah. I didn't enjoy it because I thought, well, you can get drunk. Yeah. I shouldn't be getting drunk. I need to be with the people who can't get drunk either because but they've got to get up it. in the morning. But still do but it. But still do it because that's the mutually assured destruction of the pub. At the Rusty, everyone's working. Everyone's got work the next day. Yeah, so yeah. then you feel camaraderie in a sense yeah. of, we're fucking it, aren't we? But yeah, let's yeah, have yeah. a good time. Yeah, and there, like, Ugh. I'm actually working now. <laughs> And that's that's my point on it. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Um, um, well, we've come to the end. We've come to the end. Uh, thanks very much for listening. Uh, yeah. It's not it's not forty seven. Yeah, yeah. The, we've come to the end of this episode. Thanks very much. We're going to carry on uh, with the Patreon. Uh, the live pod should be up this week or the next. So get in now for the Patreon. Um, otherwise, you'll miss it. Otherwise, you'll miss it. <laughs> Uh, the Patreons have kind of been better than the main ones. <coughs> Patreons have been banging, man. They've been really good recently. Been really hitting it, and we're <coughs> we're a hundred quid off our target of five hundred quid. And once we hit that, we're going to start making forty-five to an hour episodes. Right now, they're sort of twenty-five to thirty-five. Um, see you guys next week. Thanks a lot.